I'm really excited guys, just got a delivery. Uh, this is gonna be a lot different than my normal content. Gonna be creating my first NAS, or Network Accessible Storage, Network Attached Storage. See, I don't even know what it means. Never done this before, but I'm super excited to do it in the rack downstairs. I've seen a lot of reviews and stuff from people that do this kind of thing all the time, but I haven't really seen many amateurs like me trying to stick it together. So I figured I'd make a video of actually assembling this thing, sticking it in my rack, and probably some videos down the future of setting it up and actually making it work correctly. All right, guys, it's a little bit like Christmas here today. I just got a whole bunch of hardware in. I'm gonna create my first NAS today. As usual, I think I'm going a little bit overboard, uh, way more than what I really need, I'm sure. It's the RS1221 Plus, and this is from Synology's rack mounted line. So I learned that's what the uh, R stands for. The models that start with the D are the desktop models. But you can see this is a 2U unit with uh, eight bays. So I started out with five of these uh, Seagate Iron Wolf four terabyte drives. So that's what's going to start powering it and uh, researching these things found out that there is this cool little card that they sell to add some extra features to it. It is a combo card that plugs into the PCI. So it gets you a 10 gig ethernet port there as well as two NVMe slots that can be used uh, only for cash, but that's all I need to use it for. And I'm just starting out with one NVMe, uh, one terabyte drive. So that's gonna be my cash because my whole storage capacity right now is about one terabyte, so it can all be cached for now, but plenty of room to expand in the future. First, just a couple quick unboxings. Uh, I was gonna go with RAID 6 for this thing, um, and they told me that I needed at least five drives to do RAID 6, so I started with five drives. Um, I think I might actually be using Synology's uh, RAID system after reading some more information about that, but we can get that get into that later on. Uh, so this is just the Samsung 970 Evo Plus, one terabyte of cache that is gonna plug into this card here. And here's what you get in this little box. You get a heat sink, uh, and there's already a one of these rails on the front of it, but if you needed a full-size one, it comes with a taller one too, and they're both vented, which is nice. Uh, and then you get a little quick install guide. Here is the card. It's gonna plug into the PCI. So here you can see that this is where you get your 10 gig port and on the side you can plug in your two NVMe drives. Also included a little rubber pad and some heat sinks for your drives and some screws to attach them. Now this thing comes with four gigs of RAM, I believe, and it can be upgraded up to 32 with two 16 gig cards. So I might add a second four gig card in it later, but I think for right now, it's gonna be plenty for my limited use of this thing. So I just wanna kinda open it up and see what it looks like here in the box. What do we have here? Power cords. Oh, here we have some screws because it can take a three and a half inch or two and a half inch hard drives. Uh, some keys. Oh, I think these lock the uh, hard drive bay doors so people can't steal them, I guess, if you're in a real server location or more likely you don't accidentally pop them out while it's being used. A quick install guide and more stuff. So because I decided to go with some super fast cash in that card, I figured that I could go with more uh, actual mechanical disks and not get SSD disks for my actual data storage because the caching is going to make it fast. No reason to spend the extra money on that. Ah, here she is in all her glory out of the packaging. Uh, while I'm looking over this thing, I'll kind of tell you some of my use cases for this thing. 
There's a lot of reviews to tell you all about the, you know, ports in the back and the angled power cable that you get and all of the specs on this thing. But I want something just to have more disk space for my video editing was my primary reason for getting this because I have a one terabyte SSD drive in my MacBook or my actual desktop Mac that I do my editing on and it's running out of space. So I've always wanted a NAS, figured this was a great time to do it. Another couple things that I'm gonna do with it are I'm gonna run a Plex server on it so that I can stream media to my new home theater that I just built. If you guys wanna check that out, I have a home theater build thread as well. And lastly, I am a software engineer. I don't know if you guys actually knew that or not, but that's the full-time job that lets me buy things like this. Not the YouTube channel, believe it or not. So one thing I'm gonna do is learn how to run a web server on this thing. So that's kind of what I code for a living, but I've never done the actual hardware implementation side of things. So I figured this would be a great way to learn that side of things. So it has the capability, so I'm gonna figure out how to do it. <laughs> oh God, I'm really so excited about this though. Let's see, how's this work? Uh, yeah, oh, 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 pretty. All right, so supposedly you can do either uh, two and a half or three and a half on here. I've got one of these guys. I'm gonna assume they go like that. Yep. Holes seem to line up on the bottom. All right, so four screws out of this bag. All right, and slide it in. I guess it's gonna snap. Oh. As it goes in, that little piece closes, snapped in place, and this little key goes in and turns 90 degrees. Now I guess I can't release it. Yep, so one bay is done, so I'm going to do that with the other four. But before I put the other ones in, one thing I didn't count on is this thing is super heavy. It always looked like really light for some reason. I assumed it would be kind of light. And somebody said that it was uh, shallow so that you didn't need rails. So I assumed that meant that I could just uh, use the two screws on each side to mount this thing. But that's not going to happen because this feels like it's plastic and uh, you can see that they sell rails for a hundred dollars that actually slide in and out like a drawer uh, or you could have static rails that it just sits on I guess but uh, I think I'm gonna have to get some rails because yeah I don't want to support it without them I don't think it matters which of the bays you're gonna use if you're not filling them all up so I just went and used the whole top row and then this one down here just uh, for weight distribution so I got the model that just has one power supply and you can see it comes with a right angle plug to plug in and over like that. So that's good that the cord won't be able to be pulled out of the back. Uh, and it comes with two cords. So the other one has an end like this. I guess if you're plugging it into something with a male outlet, but I'm just plugging this into a UPS on my rack that I ordered and will be coming in tomorrow. Okay, so here's my in-progress rack right now with my Unify UDM Pro and my switch with some PoE. I got a uh, Denon receiver, PlayStation stuff, and eventually I'm gonna have a UPS uh, rack mounted there. Uh, this guy is gonna go somewhere down here on the bottom uh, after I get my rails, but I just wanted to plug it in and test it out. So just plugging a Cat6 cable into the LAN one on the back for right now, up to my UDM Pro controller, and we'll plug this thing in. Let's plug it in into the front right now for easy access. 
and there is a power button on the front. Okay, I'm gonna power this thing on for the very first time. Oh yeah, that is loud. I heard them talk about the fans in this thing being pretty loud. Uh, it quickly quieted down, but on that maximum, I could tell it was a lot. Now, I am in this closet here, and this is my home theater right outside here. So I have a sneaking suspicion that I'm gonna be doing what some people do and uh, upgrade these fans to quieter ones at the cost of this thing being a little warmer probably. But uh, like I said, this thing is way overkill for me. I'm not gonna be stressing it out. So uh, we're just gonna let that start up. And the way to find it supposedly is to go to uh, findsynology.com. So I'm gonna go here. Oh, I just heard the beep. So that beep should mean that it is running. So we got uh, five lights on for the five drives. So that's a good sign. And we will see if it finds it on my network. Bam, look at that, it found it. So I am going to uh, connect to this thing. And yeah, I read all of that. And, um, sure. So there's a lot of other tutorials out there that will be better than mine, I'm sure, but I'm gonna go ahead and set up DSM, the Disk Station Manager. That's kind of the operating system for these things. And yeah, it's gonna blow away my empty drives. So we're gonna let it install that. Um, that was actually 8%. It's happening pretty fast. But it says it'll be about 10 minutes, so we will see. All right, well, it actually took about 60 seconds to install. Uh, maybe this is the 10 minutes. <laughs> right, I guess that is coming back up. It's only been a minute and a half. There's our friendly beep, and that's at eight minutes and 18 seconds. So less than two minutes, and we're launching built-in packages. Now this is the latest DSM-7. I guess anything before uh, halfway through 2021 was DSM-6. Uh, this is currently February 2nd. Groundhog's Day of 2022. So uh, any new Synology thing you buy, I'm sure you're getting version 7. So I'm just going to name some stuff, set this up. I'm definitely going to pick automatic updates. And I do not have a Synology account, so I'm going to go ahead and create one. I've heard there's a good reason to have this secure sign-in service, as well as some other things. So let me create that real quick. All right, done, account created. All right, I just went ahead and skipped most of the uh, stuff that they were asking me about. I'm gonna create a new pool now. It's clicking on start. And originally, like I said, I was gonna use RAID 6. And uh, so you get two, up to two of your drives can fail and you can still uh, retrieve all of your data. Uh, this is a minimum of four drives is required. So yeah, the guy at BNH was wrong. He told me I needed five, but oh well, I have five. Uh, but the SHR, which is the Synology Hybrid RAID, I believe, uh, there's two of them. There's a regular one and a number two. So the regular one, one of your drives can fail and you can still get your stuff back. I'm going to pick this one because two of the drives can fail and I can still get it back. So I'm going to lose some storage space, but uh, have better fault tolerance. Um, the cool thing about the SHR ones uh, as compared to the regular RAID 6 is if I want to add another hard drive later on, I don't have to add a four terabyte one. I can get a bigger one when they're cheaper. And, you know, a couple of years down the road when I need more space, I can throw in a 10 terabyte drive and they don't all have to be of equal size. So I don't have to replace 
all five of my drives with 10 terabyte drives, I can uh, do it that way. So uh, that's the one I'm gonna go with. And I'm gonna select all of these drives to be part of the pool. So you don't have to do that. You can just, I could just select four of them because that's the minimum. And I could use the fifth one for something like uh, a hot swappable drive. So if one of my drives failed and it detected that, it would automatically just use the fifth drive to recover everything that was on drive four and keep working normally. But uh, I don't want to do that. I want to keep my uh, space. So we're going to do that. So you can see my estimated capacity is only 10 terabytes even though I have five four terabyte drives in here, which is 20 terabytes. So I'm losing half of that drive space, but I'm getting the uh, fault tolerance with the SHR RAID. And for the volume, uh, so I can split this up to be uh, separate volumes, but I'm just gonna click max and I'm just gonna have one volume that is all of my stuff in here. Uh, am I gonna do that? Hmm, let me think about that. All right, here's where I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna guess some stuff. So uh, I'm gonna split it up into some volumes. I'm gonna put a terabyte from my web server volume, which is way, way, way too much. Uh, and we're gonna go ButterFS and uh, yes. Uh, and we're gonna apply this. Yeah, all that stuff can go away. Now here you're doing something with the drives. Okay, so everything is healthy over here. All right, so we have a little resource monitor and uh, info down here about all of our drives. So I'm gonna go back to my storage pool and I want to add some more volumes. Aha, let's see, create, create a volume. All right, cool. So now it shows me that I have uh, 10 terabytes left essentially. So with five of my terabytes, I'm going to make a media volume. So this is where I'm going to uh, put all of my media for my Plex server eventually. And then I'm gonna create a third volume. And this is gonna be my, uh, essentially my Final Cut Pro volume where I'm gonna store all my libraries. So I don't know, just call it my editing volume. All right, so were these good decisions? Were these good names? I have no idea. Uh, let me know down in the comments, guys, if you have any recommendations for me. I'm sure this will change over time, but hey, I gotta set this up and gotta start somewhere. All right, I get a nice little uh, overview column here that shows my volumes and it gives you a little graphical representation of where the drives are in the NAS, so that's kind of cool. And then on the main menu, you have all of this. So here's my package center, and I assume this is where I go to install some of the packages that I'm gonna want to use on this thing. All right, just clicked on update because it told me that there was an update available for Active Insight. Uh, these are the packages that come pre-installed. It's got some beta packages that you have to agree to. And here's the Plex Media Server. So that will be one of the things I'll be installing. And under all packages, uh, there's lots of goodies in here. So uh, I think that's gonna be it for this video. Once I start learning more about this and setting some stuff up, I will probably make another video. So here's my node version 12 or 14 that you can choose from that I will be playing around with eventually. Yeah, and so uh, look forward to learning how to use all of this stuff. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you found it helpful. Let me know if you want to see more of this kind of stuff or if I should just stick to cars. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.